Hello and welcome everyone. I want to thank you very much for tuning in here to another episode of Asbrox Bengals Thoughts presented to you by Impact Sports Cincinnati. My name is of course Chris Asbrock and I am back for another week after another brutal loss from our Cincinnati Bengals and this one was a lot tougher to take I think than most people would have expected. Cincinnati Bengals were flat out dominated 27 to 3 in what could be considered one of the worst Bengals performances in a long, long time. Uh, the Bengals just could not get anything going once. I mean, they had the first couple drives, you know, of the game were were pretty solid. And uh, but it's just there's really not much to say. The offensive line was absolutely atrocious. Bobby Hart and Andre Smith were an absolute abomination they were horrendous on the offensive line and I mean Andy Dalton sacked a career high eight times you can't you're not going to get much accomplished when you know that happens to your starting quarterback now this is not one of my you know I was kind of dreading doing this video watching especially watching the game last night to today it's you know just trying to think of exactly what I wanted to uh, kind of just kind of say, and it was, you know, again, absolutely atrocious and brutal for the Cincinnati Bengals as they just could not get anything, anything going, you know, offense, you know, defense, you know, there were some issues that they were having. They did cause the turnover in the, you know, the first drive of the Steelers, uh, you know, of their game, uh, of the game for them, I should say. But other than that, it just was not. It was not pretty. Andy Dalton, 21 of 37. He finished with 171 yards. He did have an interception, a quarterback rating of 57.4. He was sacked eight times for 69 yards, uh, which Joe Mixon, 15 rushes for 62 yards. He did have a long of 15. Um, Auden Tate, he was targeted six times along with Giovanni Bernard. Uh, Auden Tate was able to haul in uh, four of those receptions for uh, 50 yards, his longest of 23. But uh, in terms of you know the way the game was going for the Cincinnati Bengals, they they could get absolutely nothing going. And it, you know they you know they were you know defensively they gave up 20 first downs. Um, you know 12 of those were by the pass. Now, granted, if you look at the way Mason Rudolph. Uh, and the Steelers' offense operated. The majority of Mason Rudolph's passes were short passes, uh, but still, you, you got to take nothing wrong. You know, take nothing away. He finished twenty-eight or twenty-four, twenty-eight for two hundred twenty-nine yards. He did have two touchdowns. His longest was forty-three yards to Deontay Johnson, which was a beautiful, uh, beautiful pass. Uh, you know, that was a two-play drive, and it took literally eleven seconds. So, again. Since I Bengals, I mean, it was it was bad. Uh, I'm not going to really dig in deep in this game because there's really not much to say. Uh, if you look at, you know, the Bengals once again had a lead uh, at the end of the first quarter. Uh, they were up 3 nothing, uh, thanks to the Randy Bullock 28-yard uh, field goal. But if you look at the drive, uh, let me pull up the drive here. Uh, the Bengals go, they end up punting. Uh, they went seven plays for 33 yards, did gain two first downs. Uh, time possession, they went, you know, bled four minutes and 58 seconds off the clock before they did have to punt. Uh, but then literally, you know, it was two plays, three yards for the, uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers offensively. Bengals get the ball back via the fumble. Uh, there was a huge play defensively for the Bengals as they were able to uh, rise up and, 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 you know, and get a turnover. And that was, that was a big takeaway for the Cincinnati Bengals, which you kind of felt that this game was going to go kind of south right from the get-go. Uh, you know, against the Steelers, you you know you haven't beaten them in, since 2015. You know, I, I'm I'm tired of picking the the Bengals to win games because it's obviously not it's not working out for me. And it's you know, I, we you look at the way the team has played, and you think that they are somewhere in between. Uh, you know, are they really as bad as we've seen in San Francisco and the Pittsburgh game? I mean, those were two blowouts. Uh, but are they as good as we saw in the Steelers game or the uh, Seahawks game and the first, in the second half of the the Buffalo game? They have to be, you know, they're somewhere in between. But you know, if you look at, you know, two games, we've seen two different results. It's starting, you know, it's really hard to, you know, to really comprehend what you're seeing out of this team. Uh, there's just a lot of questions to come out of this game. Um, you know, the Cincinnati Bengals are just, you know. 
this is, you know, offensive line wise, this is bad. This is a very, very bad team offensive line wise. Uh, again, I'm not going to get, you know, I'm not going to get really into it, you know, a lot. Uh, they did try to run the ball more. Uh, again, Joe Mix, like I said, 15 attempts for 62 yards. You know, they were able, they were trying to get it going a little bit more on the ground, but, you know, this is just, this is tough. It really, it's a tough one. It, it really truly is because you, you look at, you know, the hype coming into the season for the Cincinnati Bengals and what we thought was going to happen and, and everything like that. And it just, unfortunately, it just, it's unraveled pretty quick. And to something that we, I think a lot of us fans and, you know, you know, bloggers and stuff like that and, and people who, you know, media, media types, I saw, I saw a wide range of, you know, predictions coming into the season. I felt, you know, and I said it right, you know, my season preview, they could go anywhere from, you know, three and 13 to 10 and six, the talents there. But then now when you see a game like this, is the talent really there? That's what you have to question. That's what I'm really starting to wonder is if, you know, if it really is there or is this just, you know, we we're obviously in for a long season. There's no way to hide that. Uh, we should have known the way things were going, especially when Jonah Williams gets hurt, you know, our first pick in the draft uh, this year. He goes down and he's out for the year. We should have known that's kind of how this was, you know, this season was going to head. Um, I did state that, you know, and I've, I've said it numerous times on the record and everything like that, that if the Bengals, if they stay healthy, they can they can make a you know a, a serious push. Uh, they had a chance now to to get back in the division, and they let it slip away. Actually, they didn't even let it slip away. They just got flat out taken from Pittsburgh. Dominated from you know that second drive on, and it was you know the Bengals really never had a shot. You know they were able to dial up a lot of pressure, and you got to give Pittsburgh credit because they were you know if you look at the total net yards, the Bengals only had 175 net yards. I mean, they were four of fourteen on third down. Now, defensively, the Steelers were three of nine. So the Bengals, we always talk about them getting off the field on third down. That's what you want. But then, you know, you're coming back at you know you get thirty three percent. But then on the flip side, you're only converting four of fourteen, which is twenty nine percent. You cannot have that if you're looking to beat your heat arrival on the. When I say heat of rival, I don't think Pittsburgh even looks at us anymore as a rival. There's no way. They've they've just victimized and beaten us every time we play them, it seems like, and we can't get over that hump. I don't know how much of it's mental or, you know, or it, it, it's, you know it's got to be 100% mental on this team because they know that, you know, they're going into a game and they know, you know, they have that feeling that they're going to lose. Now, Zach Taylor on the, you know, on the one eye, on the one end, he – you know, he, he didn't know what to expect in this rivalry. He's coming from something completely different. But then, you know, he now has to, you know, get his team prepared, which a lot of those guys in that locker room know what it know what it's like to play the Steelers. They know what it's like to, to face them. They know what to expect. Granted, all the big pieces were gone. Ben was out. Antonio Brown's gone. Burfick's gone. Le'Veon Bell's gone. A lot of those players are not, you know, they're not in here anymore. They're, they're long gone. Um, but, you know, still – the Bengals just could not get anything going. It was it was truly truly bad. Um, you know, you only had 102 yards net passing. Obviously, that's you know minus the sacks. I mean, you look at the stats. I mean, the Bengals rushed it for a total of um, 19 times for 73 yards. They couldn't get anything going. I mean, really, you know, you just you kind of go through the final team statistics, and all you can do is just shake your head. You know. Bengals defensively gave up only 326 yards. Uh, that's not too too bad. 260 of those were on you know through the air. I mean, I, you would think that that's you know that's a recipe to win. But I gotta give you have to give a lot of credit to the Pittsburgh Steelers and the way they handled Mason Rudolph last night. Obviously, Mason Rudolph is he's the heir apparent to Ben Roethlisberger. That's what you know everyone's known that for a while. Uh, me being an Oklahoma State guy, if you've you know if you if you know me, you know how big of an OK State guy I am. I love Mason Rudolph, and I wanted him here in Cincinnati. And obviously, there was a lot of talk that the Steelers had did you know they did trade up to take Mason Rudolph, knowing that the Bengals had a serious interest in getting him. And look what happens now—he rises up and and he takes the Bengals out. 
you know, with relative ease. You know, he's very calm in the pocket. There's no, nothing that, you know, flusters him. He's very – he's mobile. Uh, again, as an Oklahoma State guy, I loved watching him running that offense under Mike Gundy. And, you know, here he's got some weapons to get the ball to. James Conner was okay. Uh, but, you know, there was times where we made him look – you know, we made him look good. He had – he was targeted eight times, and he, you know, holding all eight for 83 yards. His longest was 21 yards. He did have 42 yards on the ground. Uh, with it, on 10 attempts, so it's an average of 4.2. His longest run was 21 yards. So the Bengals did do a good job of keeping Connor and Samuels and Benny Snell, you know, in check. They didn't let them, you know, get out of hand. In terms of the, you know, the defense, let's face it, our, you know, our – our line, you know, they get pressure, but then they cannot keep the containment. They let the they let the quarterback ex- escape, and then he was able to make a play. That's just that's how it's been. It was like that against, uh, you know, it's been like that ever since week one. Um, you know, they did a good job of getting to Russell Wilson, but then uh, they made Josh Allen pay for it a couple times. But other than that, you know, San Francisco game that was a wipe. You know that, and then last night. It, it, nothing could go right for the Bengals. And then once you saw Pittsburgh, they realized once they could get the ball outside, uh, you know, when they got the ball in the hand of Samuels and let him go and get out and let him use his speed. I mean, Juju Smith-Schuster was held in check last night. He was only targeted four times and hauled in three of those for a total of 15 yards. His longest was nine yards. So when you hold juju to you know only 15 yards receiving on on three pa- on three receptions you would think you're easily going to win that game uh, but no james connor had eight uh, samuels had eight receptions and then johnson deontay johnson had six uh you know you just it it's mind-boggling when you think about what this Bengals team is and you think like i said you think they have a lot of talent and it just it tends to come back and, and and let you down. That's what we're accustomed to. Like I said, I'm I'm at the point now to where it's just it's numb, you know, watching some of these games and I know at 0 and four this season's over with and, you know, we're we're looking at easily a top three pick in the draft coming up. Uh, it's it's very, very, very frustrating to see what, you know, how this is all playing out and what could have been and what should be uh, for this team. Granted AJ Green, he's been out, Cordy Glenn's been out Things obviously can change, uh, and you know, for the better. Um, but again, when you're getting sacked eight times, you know, I don't care who you are as a quarterback. You're not, you know, a lot. I saw some people putting the blame on Andy Dalton. No, that's not the case. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna blame Andy Dalton at all, um, or maybe not at all. I will blame him on some things because you know, he's not going to be perfect every game. Um, but you know. It was it was a frustrating game overall. It really truly was, and uh, all you can do again is shake your head. That's really, you know, something has to change. And like I said, I'm really not going to hammer into, you know, this is just a tough one to dissect. And I'm I'm just kind of, you know, I'm kind of numb, you know, to everything. It, you know, it's it's at that point now to where you just there's nothing really much else you can say. Uh, but you know, you have to give you got to give the Steelers credit. Uh, for what they did because their their game plan was perfect, knowing that if you get the ball to the outside on our linebackers, you know, their line, our linebackers aren't very good. Nick Vigil, who I think is a – he's a solid tackler, but that's, you know, he, he struggled. He's got no speed really on the outside. Preston Brown, you know, he's not one that's going to, you know, get you a lot of, you know, a lot of tackles on, you know, on the outside either. You know, so you're really putting yourself in, you know – you know, between a rock and a hard place. I mean, Nick Vigil had 11 combined tackles last night. Sean Williams, your safety, had nine. Uh, Preston Brown was seven, and then Dre Kirkpatrick and Jesse Bates was six. So if you look at that, three of your top five tacklers were, like, in the secondary. You had two safeties and a corner who were your top – Top, you know, in, in your top five, uh, you're a linebacker and, or two linebackers are in the top three and tackles. Uh, you know, it's just, you know, you just not, again, not much else you can really say. I mean, it's really frustrating. Um, you know, you look ahead to next week and in, in the Arizona Cardinals and, you know, what, what, you know, 
what positives are you going to be able to take? And, and when you look into what's going to go on in this game, that's what I'm really wondering. Uh, again, it's just this is tough. It's really, really hard. Uh, it's aggravating. Uh, it's frustrating because you see, I mean, at least me personally, I, I could be, you know, I could be looking at it different, but I see that there's a lot of talent on this team still. Uh, obviously, the coordinators are different. Uh, the offense is different. But, you know, you look at what could be with this offense and what should be in terms of the plays and, and how things should play out. But when your offensive line is a total sieve and your, you know, your quarterback drops back and is getting destroyed in less than two seconds, it doesn't really matter what kind of plays you're going to run. It's just that, you know, your guys are just going to get blown up. I mean, it, it's – that's what's aggravating. You know, you see – you look at the comparisons defensively. Um, you know, the Steelers had nine tackles for loss. And that – I mean, Cameron Hayward had two and a half sacks. T.J. Watt, one and a half. Devin Bush with one. Um, you know, Hargrave – I mean, they, they, everyone contributed defensively to this, you know, to this, you know, this nice victory for the, for the Pittsburgh Steelers last night on Monday Night Football. Uh, you know, you had to, you had to think that the, the team was going to, we, when you saw the way things were kind of going, you had to figure, you know, they had to been licking their chops and seeing what you know what the offensive line was like again. No Cordy Glenn, uh, you know, no uh, no Jonah Williams. You know, Jonah Williams is still an unknown. We don't we haven't seen anything from. Him. We don't know what to expect from Jonah Williams. However, I think that um, when Cordy Glenn does come back, if he ever comes back, I mean, it seems like it's been decades since he's come back or he's been on the field for us. What what can you expect from this Bengals defense or offensive line when Cordy Glenn comes back? I think you you know you've got your left tackle, uh, Cordy Glenn. I think once you know, I think once he comes back, then I think you shift Andre Smith over to right tackle. Who you know a lot of people are are crapping on Andre Smith, but I still I still would take him over Bobby Hart. I think Bobby Hart's that bad. Um, he just stood there and watched. You know, on the majority of his plays, he watched his quarterback get hit 12 times last night. 12 times was a quarterback hit. And, I mean, as an offensive lineman, you have to be, you know, you're going to you're gonna face some skilled guys who are going to make plays. That's just that's part of it. Some of these guys are, are they're ridiculous athletically. T.J. Watt is like that. You know, you're going to, you know, you're going to face like guys like Jadavion Clowney. And, and those guys are going to be, you know, they're going to have athleticism and they're going to beat your guy, you know, sometimes that's part of it, but eight sacks, nine tackles for loss and 12 quarterback hits. Your offensive line has to be better than that. Plain and simple. Now, what would happen if Jonah Williams was, was back? Uh, now that you don't know. I mean, I think Jonah Williams would be your left tackle, which is what they drafted him to be. Cordy Glenn, I think would shift over and be a uh, right guard or left guard. I'm sorry. Uh, but there's a lot of shuffling going on. I think I would move Trey Hopkins over to guard and have Billy Price step in at center. Uh, I know they like Billy, uh, or I know they like uh, Trey Hopkins a lot, but I think you can really move him around. Um, but you, you have to find another tackle that's not going to get beaten every single time off the ball like Bobby Hart is and like Andre Smith has been on the left side. Again, Andre Smith's more of a right tackle, so I think you can shift him over with Cordy Glenn there at left tackle. Um, but I think that there's just, you know, it, it's tough. Uh, and one thing I did ask, uh, I did put it out on Twitter. I did get one response here. Um, I think for these videos, I'm going to start uh, taking questions. Uh, I will, I'll put them out there on Facebook, uh, my Facebook uh, blog page, um, Chris Asbrock Sports Journalist. And then I'm also uh, going to put it out there. I put it out on Twitter uh, with the hashtag Ask Asbrock. And uh, one thing that I did see from Bengals Backyard, uh, they're a good follow. Make sure you check them out. Um, they did state, you know, they did have the question, how much blame can be put on Dalton versus the offensive line? Um, I think when you look at it, I think it's every bit 90-10, uh, 90% obviously on the on, on the offensive line and then 10% on Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton's not going to be get away with the scot-free uh, because when he did have some time, he did make a couple, um, you know, rough throws. 
Uh, the interception was pretty bad. Uh, but I thought the, the pass to Tyler Eifert in the corner of the end zone on that first drive there, uh, where the bang- or the second drive when the Bengals ended up getting uh, the field goal out of it, that was a gorgeous pass. He laid it right in there for Tyler Eifert, who I felt should have hauled that in. It was you know right in his hands. I think he should have had that. Uh, but again, I'm going to say 90-10 in terms of the blame and how it falls on the offensive line compared to Andy Dalton. I think you know Andy Dalton, like I said, is not he's not blame free, uh, but the offensive line is just so bad that it, you can't get anything going offensively. It doesn't matter what play you run. Again, when your offensive line is this bad, it doesn't matter if we had Patrick Mahomes back there. It doesn't matter if we had Tom Brady. It doesn't matter who we have back there. It's going to be a nightmare, and that's what we've seen so far from this team. And it has to change. It has to change quick. And Jim Turner, he's the he's the offensive line coach. What the hell? What the hell are you doing? I, I mean, this you know you were brought on because you had worked with Zach Taylor previously. Um, and then I was told, uh, I, I haven't seen the article yet, but, um, I was told that, you know, the Bengals were prepared to let, uh, Bobby Hart walk in free agency, but Jim Turner wanted him to, to stay because he felt that Bobby Hart could lead, be the leader on this offensive line. I mean, to quote Ray, uh, Ray Barone and everybody loves Raymond, what the hell? Uh, exactly. I mean, like that's Jim Turner. I mean, that's on you, man. That's flat out on you. You have to get your guys ready to play every single week. And we have seen what it's it's a monster failure from what we've seen so far this season. Your quarterback, Andy Dalton, is getting absolutely pummeled every time he drops back, you know, in the pocket. It's these things kind of happen. You can't get a rushing game going. You, your passing game is awful because of that. You can't you don't have time to step up and throw balls uh, because your offensive line is letting guys run by. These are the things that cannot happen. And, you know, this has to change now. Granted, I'm, you know, I've, I fall into, I think a little bit different category in the Zach Taylor um, in terms of Zach Taylor. I, I think that, you know, I'm going to cut him a lot of slack uh, because he was, he knew what he was getting into coming here, but I think that the injury-wise with A.J. Green being out for as long as he has, um, you know, Cordy Glenn's being out in concussion protocol, Jonah Williams out, there's a lot of injuries that, again, I think if – I'm not going to, you know, bash on Zach Taylor and his coaching, you know, simply because of the injuries that we've had, um, you know, the offensive line again is just absolutely atrocious, and that to me falls on your offensive line coach and Jim Turner. Uh, he can't, you know, this is something's got to change. Absolutely has to change, and it has to change uh, immediately because we can't keep having this. So um, again, it's you know this one, this one's a tough one. Uh, you got to give all the credit in the world to the Pittsburgh Steelers, Mike Tomlin and his staff. Uh, absolutely own the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, they, they know what to expect when they play us. They know how to dominate us. You know, you got to give them credit. And again, you have to give uh, credit to Mason Rudolph. I think he, like I said, I think he played, he played great, uh, in terms, you know, it wasn't all, you know, on the defense, it wasn't, it wasn't as bad. Um, you know, the score was bad, but you know, I mean, see if I can pull up the time of possession here. Time of possession was was equal. Um, the Bengals had the ball for 30 minutes and 14 seconds compared to 29 minutes and 46 seconds for the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. So the Bengals, uh, you know, you can't really, you know, put it on the defense being out there too long. Uh, but it was a lot of, you know, the short passes and everything like that to get, you know, get things going quickly for them. That's what I like about the Pittsburgh Steelers and what they did in their game plan on how to handle us. They weren't going to put a lot of pressure on Mason Rudolph to go out there and beat us. They were going to play little, you know, the quick, you know, quick passes, the dink and dunks, and and beat us that way. Get to the outside and and get you know use their speed because our linebackers have no speed, you know, east and west. So that's that's where they're going to get us, and that's where they that's where it you know effective um, and effectively put us out of the game. And um, again, um, Pittsburgh, I still don't think is very, very good. Uh, and obviously in terms of what we've seen in the past, uh, you know, they still have a lot of question marks in my opinion, but they're still, um, <laughs> they've got a lot less question marks than the Cincinnati Bengals do. And they, they, like I said, they flat out own us and there's nothing you can really, you know, say to that. Um, 
Pittsburgh now, I think they have to go. You know, they play Baltimore next week. Uh, I think they get a little dose of reality of, you know, Baltimore is going to be coming off of a tough loss to the Cleveland Browns. Baltimore is going to be coming back. They're going to be, you know, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be fit and ready to uh, to play. And uh, so Pittsburgh better be ready. But if they if they continue to play like they were, you know, last night with the uh, with not putting that much pressure on Mason Rudolph, you know, they can easily, you know, come out with a victory in this game just with that game plan. But obviously they have to step up defensively like they did last night and, and take control of the game. And uh, Cincinnati Bengals, now you have to come back and you, you uh, play another home game against the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, the Cardinals aren't very good, uh, but you know you lose this game here. Zero and eight at the bye week is a very, very, very distinct possibility. And oh boy, um, I mean, you look at the schedule; it's it's tough to forecast some victories, uh, you know, and looking at it. So, but again, uh, it's it's tough. I you know I really didn't get much into the game. I've I've pretty much just bashed the offensive line uh, the majority of the time, but. Um, it's, you know, hey, this was a rough one guys. And, um, you know, there's, you know, we keep saying that it's always next year, but, you know, being in Cincinnati, it's, it's been one hell of a summer. Uh, the reds were, you know, up and down. They had some bright spots. We thought, you know, they were going to make a run. They fell flat on their face. FC Cincinnati fell flat on their face. Uh, the Bengals, they can't get out of their own way, uh, here in the first four weeks of the season. And it's, it's only October 1st. So, uh, but I look at it this way. I think God, it's hockey season. So, you know, we got that. We got the Cyclones here in Cincinnati. Make sure you check them out. But, um, again, the Cincinnati Bengals, you know, there is some hope if they can get some of these guys healthy. A.J. Green, uh, he can come back. He can open up a lot of opportunities uh, for our receivers and offense-wise. But, uh, again, it all comes down to the offensive line. And, you know, they have to be able to uh, – to block, they got to be able to get in the way of some of these guys uh, defensively because if if not, it's going to be a long season, uh, and you're going to see a lot more injuries to our quarterbacks and running backs if that's going to be the case. So, uh, again, as always, this was a uh, you know this was a tough one, but again, I thank you guys so much for you know for tuning in to these videos, whether you listen to me on uh, my uh, podcast page Anchor.fm or you watch the video version of it on YouTube. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough for that. Uh, thank you as always. Uh, you guys do, you know, you mean a lot to me. So uh, make sure you check me out on Twitter at I am Chris Asbrock and make sure you check out the website, feeltheimpactsports.com. I do a uh, college football breakdown on there. I do, uh, you know, obviously the Bengals recap. These The video and podcast get posted over to that page as well. Uh, since hockey season's back, we are we are uh, firing up the Coach Scott Hicks show uh, with Miami University women's hockey coach Scott Hicks uh, discussing their season and their preview of their uh, of their upcoming you know uh, series against you know whomever they may play. So make sure you check out that every week. That's on uh, my anchor page as well for the podcast. So as always, thank you guys so much. I truly, truly, truly appreciate it. It means a lot. And uh, we will be back next week for another episode as we discuss the game against the Arizona Cardinals. So, guys, thank you very much, and have yourselves a fantastic night.